Ah, good morning, good morning to you guys. Man, I don't know why I am talking so loud when we have such great technology in the truck. I am Steven Montero, a.k.a. Trooper Steve with WKMG News 6, your News 6 morning team, your traffic safety expert here live in Results 1, what we do every single day, Trooper Steve on patrol. Um, and what we do, if you're new here, I, I want to like talk to some of the new folks that may have been like, what the heck does this guy do in a truck and why does he do it? Well, we are the, uh, I want to say, I'm going to go on a limb, the only uh, local embedded news organization that has a law enforcement officer on staff who's part full time of the team here at News 6 and we try to bring things to you in a relatable and a different fashion other than just a talking head. Uh, I can get on TV, I can read some words to you and we can call it a day. But here at News 6, what we're trying to do, not what we're trying to, what we're doing, because heck, I've been here seven years with you guys, believe it or not, and I'm so mad we did not celebrate this. Last week was our full, what's, what's today's date? No, I think it's today. Yesterday, or this week, might be, or is, the first, the, the full year of Results 1 being fully operational out on the road. We have been uh, bringing you Trooper Steve on patrol now for one year, every day with some type of live stream, bringing you an interview, uh, traffic safety information, uh, a, a complaint, uh, or just a, a traffic observation that we went out and saw. And it's because of you guys that this has become so successful. Uh, for those that are watching here, this is live. Uh, I am literally driving on Ace Road right now, eastbound, approaching uh, Orange Blossom Trail. We're live here. This is what we call Results One. It has seven cameras in it, along with also all, all amazing technology. And what we're able to do is stream this platform here on three different areas live at one time. ClickOrlando.com, number one uh, news website in Central Florida. And then News 6 Plus, our smart streaming app and uh, for your TV. And then, of course, the app. Everyone's got an app, right? New, the WKMG News 6 app that we're, we're streaming right now. Uh, so thank you guys for taking the time and joining me here. I know it's early. It's 8.30 in the morning. Uh, so things can get busy. But when you guys take the time, maybe we learn a thing or two and have a fun discussion. So today, what are we talking about? Man. Uh, this is an interesting one because here in Central Florida, there's been drama with this in previous years. Now, uh, within recent years, we have not seen any problems, but what am I talking about? Today, we are talking about funeral processions. And I need to think hard when I say it because I almost want, I always mispronounce the word procession. But funeral processions, you know, it is the one of the guaranteed things, unfortunately, in life. Uh, we are all going to pass at some point, and uh, then a service takes place uh, by our loved ones. And with that, there comes laws in transportation of deceased, uh, memorial process when it comes to funeral processions. How do you get the, the body of a deceased from point A to point B legally, safely, and ceremonially? That's definitely not a word. Um, in the process of that. And Florida has a traffic law that covers funeral processions. So you've been out and about driving and all of a sudden you see some flashing lights uh, either escorted under police escort or authorized there are funeral escort vehicles. And they are required to be equipped with certain safety equipment and things like that. But the crazy part is most people don't understand is they do have a traffic right of way when it comes to negotiating in travel lanes. And we're going to talk about exactly when that's allowed, when that's not allowed, and how it should be done properly. Uh, so before I find a, a space out here, uh, out and about here in the roadway where we can go over the law. Do you guys remember the company I'm talking about? And I'm going to talk about them in name because they're no longer in business. They were shut down and they did things not only 
dangerous, they did things illegal and improper. I'm talking about a company that was locally here, it used to be called Metro State. Now, uh, the individual who ran that company, uh, Jeremy DeWitt, was arrested for impersonating a police officer uh, along with many other charges, and that company was shut down. So, what we saw here, unfortunately, was a funeral type escort company that was operating almost as a law enforcement agency. Aggressive driving, they had motorcycles, they'd run lights, and all sorts of things. And they made the, pop, the, the populace of the funeral company here in Central Florida really catch a bad reputation when there are so many others that are doing it safely, that are doing it the right way. And I wanted to go over what is exactly the right way with you, and we're gonna talk about that. Uh, this morning because there's a, a high likely at some point in your life you are going to encounter uh, a funeral uh, some type of escort so before we dive into the law I'm in a residential neighborhood over here in College Park right now uh, trying to find a little place to, uh, where we could pull off in the Sun get some good lighting and uh, go over Florida law with you guys but the easy one under police escort right you're driving you see the red and blue lights. As drivers, red and blue lights to us are pretty standard operations on what we're supposed to be doing. Look at this cute little puppy. Hello, puppy dog. Um, and standard operating, uh, we see the red and blue lights. We know, okay, we've got to slow down. Uh, we need to yield right away, move out of the way. And under police escort it's pretty common sense because usually it's done with motorcycles and things like that and they're giving the direction that is required of you uh, when that procession is moving through and man I tell you my cameras are sensitive today I'm gonna need engineering to tighten these things up a little bit um, keep dropping the signal out here so let's talk Florida we have a diverse group of laws and under chapter 316 it covers everything that is traffic related so the 316 traffic um, kind of spot 316 area point whatever then covers everything traffic uh, so when you go and you're searching for certain traffic laws and you're finding outside of the 316 understand you're probably looking underneath the wrong statue. So what statue are we talking about here today? We're going to be talking about 316.1974 and it is named Funeral Procession Right of Way and Liability. Okay, Liability is big and I'm going to say something that may not sit well with most, with some, I, and I, I don't walk around being cautious about triggers and stuff let's just let's talk about real as real as it gets when it comes to traffic there is no emergency in a funeral procession none zip nada there is no reason to speed there is no reason to drive recklessly uh, everyone is already there is probably in some type of somber mood um, and without sounding cynical, you're transporting someone who is deceased. So the due care needs to be there. There is no immediate emergency to a situation. So when you get these funeral escort companies that are flying up and down the road or uh, driving aggressively, there is zero cause for any of that. So when you encounter a funeral procession, 99, even though it should be 100% of the time, you will run into people that uh, looking for a parking spot, guys. All right, here we go. go. Good spot here under the trees. Nice little spot. All right. So 99% of the time, it's going to be moving fairly slow, okay? Uh, lower speeds and stuff like that. So 
let's go over what this statue says and then we can talk about it kind of in layman's terms a little bit, right? So we're talking funeral processions, a law enforcement vehicle, if escorting, uh, will always have a lead and a tail and display red and blue, blue lights. When I say tail, I mean the last vehicle in that procession would be a law enforcement officer. All non-law enforcement funeral escort vehicles and funeral lead vehicles will be equipped with at least one lighted circulation lamp. Now, the key to a funeral, they are authorized to display a purple light. So when you see purple, that's your sign, that's a funeral procession. Okay, it's not gonna be construction, it's not gonna be security, it's gonna be a funeral procession. Um, there are some things that you as the civilian driver, the person not related to the situation needs to understand because I think sometimes we assume certain things, right? So let's, let me explain something. You are at a red light, okay? You're at a red light and here comes the funeral procession through the green light. They come through the green light. It's not law enforcement. It's just an escort vehicle, meaning it's displaying the lights. It's the lead vehicle. You're at a red light, meaning you're not going anywhere. They come into the intersection and then they halt there. They leave one of their vehicles there so that everyone else can continue through. Suddenly your light turns green and theirs turns red. What happens? You go nowhere. Florida law 316.1974 clearly indicates that they are allowed to enter that intersection and then hold it and complete the procession. Meaning they have the authority and you as the driver are required to yield. There are no options here. A driver shall yield to that funeral procession and wait till it's completed the, the movement, uh, completed through the area. So, that's a non-law enforcement officer doing that. And they are allowed to do that. What are they not allowed to do? If they are not under police escort, they are not allowed to enter that intersection until they have the right of way to do so. So if I say we're in results one, I am the lead vehicle of a funeral. My lights are on. I have the uh, the hearse behind me along with the funeral procession, right? My light is red. As I'm approaching that light, my lights are going, I stop. I am not authorized to have a horn. I mean, to have a siren. So I shouldn't be chirping anything. So I'm there at the light now and it's red. Traffic's going in front of me. Even when my lights are flashing, I am not authorized with the equipment and under Florida law to break that traffic signal if I am not under police escort. I would have to wait. Now, once that light goes green, I'm gonna tell you right now, I own that intersection until the final person of our funeral procession has cleared. So I then can come out with the lights and hold the intersection and direct the procession through. It is completely different story if a law enforcement officer is under escort. Now, some agencies do not do funeral escorts because of the liability. Some do. I know the Osceola County Sheriff's Office does them. So, and their motorcycle unit is amazing and they do a lot of pre-staging. So, red and blue lights, we're dealing with a different, different show here, guys. We already know that is, that's the final sale. There's nothing more right of way than red and blue lights out on our traffic in our traffic world. So if a funeral procession is under law enforcement escort, I mean, they're gonna do what they want. So as before even that hearse gets to the intersection, I can guarantee you, you're gonna have either motor units or law enforcement cars already there, shut it down so we can just keep on cruising through. Driving in a procession. If you're joining us, we're talking about funeral stuff today. I even thought about opened up a business once uh, until one person messed it up for everybody. So for the drivers that are in the vehicles in there, I want to just go over a few quick things before we wrap this up. So all vehicles comprising of a funeral procession shall follow the, the vehicle in front of them, shall not change lanes, and you stay in a single file line 
and you follow as close as you can that is practical and safe, okay? Uh, obviously, we're not bumper to bumper here, but we're close enough to know where visually someone could go and say, wow, that is, a, that is some type of procession and they're all together. You would be required to have your headlights or high beams on and have your hazards flashing inside that procession, okay? Any ordinance, law, or regulation stating that a motor vehicle shall be operated in su su sufficient space enabling any other vehicle to enter and occupy a space without danger shall not be applicable in vehicle for vehicles and funeral escorts. So what does that law say? That said right there that the following too closely law is thrown out the window for you when you are involved in a vehicle procession. When you, I know it's so boring guys, but when you take time to read this stuff, you would actually learn a thing or two and be like, wow, I could, I could do that and no one's gonna say anything to me. And of course, the, the last one, each vehicle which is part of a funeral procession, like I said, shall have its headlights, either high or low beams, tail lights, and may also use flashing hazard lights if the vehicle is so equipped. Your vehicle better have hazard lights on it. Now, I'm not gonna get into the liability here because uh, funeral directors and uh, funeral homes understand their insurance side of things, but it's a sensitive time. It's a sensitive traffic situation that, uh, you know, people are on edge and stuff like this. People are going through a lot. At the end of the day, they just want uh, their loved one and their funeral uh, memorial service to go smoothly and they don't, they don't, they're not really thinking about you, but you should be thinking about them. Uh, I can promise you, I have been, for being, I'll give you my age, first time I ever said it, for being 37, I've lost a lot of people in my life, and I've been involved in a lot of law enforcement activity, uh, whether it is a funeral escort, whether it is uh, just a police type law enforcement escort, and I can tell you, it really helps when the motoring public has an understanding of what you're trying to do. And that's all I'm trying to do, is get you guys a little bit of knowledge. So I hope we gained something out of this. 316, 1945, uh, give that a read. Uh, yeah, 1974, 316, 1974. I know me, Trooper Steve, Steve Montero telling you, guys, go read this statue, sounds so cheesy. But I'm telling you guys, I even learn stuff still. They do update these laws quite often. Uh, so sometimes I'm getting an update that I didn't even know existed. Or someone's telling me, Steve, you're talking nonsense, man. Uh, they let you do this now. So uh, educate yourself a little bit. And if not, just shoot me an email to asktroopersteve at wkmg.com. I check it quite often. There's a few other people that have access to it. And sometimes we take those questions and we turn them into a Trooper Steve on patrol to where we can get out and about and just get out of the studio and talk. Like our visuals today, they weren't the best, but it's always a lot more fun talking like this with you guys than sitting back in that cold studio, right? So I hope you guys have a great Thursday. Please be weather aware. Uh, I'm glad we learned a little something today about funeral processions. Uh, tease for you guys uh, for tomorrow. We have a new reporter that has been hired with us and uh, he is going to join me tomorrow in the truck. You're not gonna wanna miss this new hire. I'll introduce him to you guys tomorrow. Please join me, 9 a.m. I believe tomorrow. You guys have a great day, drive safely. I'm gonna cruise around downtown Orlando for a little bit. Be blessed, have a good one, wear your seatbelt.